Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to go back to something we discussed a few weeks ago and look at it from a different perspective, and that is shoulders. And we talked about it uh, from a, an insubstantial perspective, that is, shoulder gin, the quality of um, being able to express your energy through the body, but particularly as related to the shoulders as one of the, the ba men, the eight energy gates of uh, Taiji Tran. And uh, it's the eighth one. And uh, ordinarily it's translated as a shoulder strike. That is uh, how I usually talk about it. But the other qualities have an insubstantial, the other uh, gates have an insubstantial quality also. So I like to, to uh, you know, think about the shoulder, not just as a, as a movement, as a something that you can do, but just like Pong Jin, which is not just a, a ward off posture, but the energy that is produced and that is expressed through that posture. So if we think about it in those terms, um, or Lu Jin, which is not just a rollback, but it's, it's that down and in energy, then what is it about shoulder that that uh, makes it unique, that makes it particularly, um, uh, make, makes it a quality that would be included in this, you know, in the eight bomb men. And uh, what I've come up with, and I've suggested a couple of weeks ago, was the idea that that shoulder is perhaps the most insubstantial of the eight, and that it is whenever you get to that point, it, it integrates everything else. And so as a gate, it is what enables us to produce this whole body energetic connection and take it to a whole different level of, of, of integration. And it's a gate because the shoulders are very often uh, tense, we take our tension into our neck and our shoulders, our trapezius muscles, and and also the uh, the way we hold our body is it tends to create um, a closed uh, posture with the uh, uh, with the shoulders. So it opening them up is like opening up a gate, and it allows the energy to move more freely. So we approached it. We did some exercises a few weeks ago where we looked at it from just from that, that sense of feeling. I'd like to actually go back and, and come at it from a different direction, the more the substantial side. That is, how do we, how do we use our shoulders in a way that enables us to get um, the maximum gin, the maximum body, mind, spirit integration uh, in the, uh, in the application and thinking about it more than just a way of knocking somebody down with your shoulder, that it's a way of, of creating a whole body state that elevates everything else. And um, since so much is, is locked in, the, so much tension is locked in the shoulder, it kinks the hose. It's a major kink in the hose. And, and a lot of times we've approached it, and a lot of Tai Chi people approach it as an impediment, like, oh, my damn shoulders, I got to relax my shoulders, you know, relax your shoulders. And, and so there's, it, it's, it's looked upon as a, a chore or a duty or something like that. And I want to come at it from a different direction where we're actually looking at it as a participant, as something that we're, your shoulders are an ally not just something you want to get out of the way. And um, so the, um, besides the muscular tension, just from, from the protective impulse that we get at that really, that really basic um, uh, stress response kind of level where we tense up just to, 
neck and shoulders just because we're trying to put the brakes on life. We're saying too much life is happening. I need to put the clamp it down. We want to, you know, that opening up uh, creates an expansion, which can be a little threatening unless you feel ready for that, that opening with your feel like, oh yeah, I don't need to be quite as protected. I can cast off my turtle shell and open up to what's going on here. So it kind of meet the moment and say yes to the moment. So like, you know, the idea in, in, in improv is, you know, the two rules are yes and you, whatever comes out, you say yes to it and then you add your own piece to that. And that's kind of what we want to do with shoulders also. We want to get that yes and quality to the shoulders. So it's not just putting the brakes on, it's opening up and saying yes. Well, yeah, okay, I'm ready. And so coming at it from that perspective, learning to use the shoulder in a way that is more uh, efficient and less constricted and allows us to access that whole body connection. One of the things that, um, you know, besides that, that um, uh, the tension that comes from that primitive stress response, there's also a problem that comes with the angle of the shoulder, just like we talked about with the hip joint. If your pelvis is, is rocked so that it's rocked forward, where you have you know, you're, you're standing with, with like this with your, 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 your body is, is pitched forward. The, the, the pelvis is pointing down. It, there's an anterior uh, tilt to it. And if we, we bring it back so that your pelvis is, is level, then you are able to move your, through your quad much more freely. You know, whereas if you if you're if you're not if your your hip is locked up and your your pelvis tilted forward, then you try to turn, and it's going to put strain on your knee as you try to turn. Whereas if your your pelvis is flattened is is level, and you turn, it's 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 a it's a a very fluid movement. Same thing happens with the shoulders. If as so many people, the shoulders are are collapse forward, the chest is collapsed and the, and the shoulders from hunching over computers and, and just, you know, from holding your body in a way that is kind of leaning, you know, you're, you're leaning backwards. So then your, your upper torso has to kind of, kind of go this, we kind of get this hunched in the, in the back as we get, particularly as we get older. And when that does the angle of the shoulder is like the hips, it also is pitched forward. So if I, you know, if I'm trying to raise my arm like this, I run into a problem. I run into a restriction, and you can try this too yourselves. If you can, sitting or standing, you can just just feel that uh, feel that uh, that restriction as you try to just you try to bring your arms up, and you can force them up from that position, but then you're rubbing the the joint in, in a way that causes an irritation. It causes tendonitis, causes a, a um, uh, arthritis to happen. So, but if you uh, you get your three pillars in, you open up the chest, open up the shoulders, and then you you bring the arms back. Ta-da! You have it becomes an effortless movement instead of a restricted movement. It's 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 quite open and free. So you're able to allow the energy to move much more freely whenever you're in that in central equilibrium and to have your, your body aligned. So the uh, first thing I would like to do is address that and just kind of go back to that and add in one other thing. And it's something I mentioned before and I've mentioned in the past, but I like to, I have not emphasized it nearly as much. And uh, Sharon brought this up. And like, this is the clavicular notch. So your clavicle, your collarbone, and there's this 
this notch right here. And if you imagine being lifted, like, like there's a, uh, like a something pulling up on your clavicular notch at the same time as you're reaching with your, the crown of your head, you're, you're coming up. What it does is it opens up the chest. It opens up the shoulders and allows, allows your breathing to be better. It allows the energy to move more freely and it enhances your effective power. So if you're standing and you're able to, anything you do like this is going to have more power than if you're, you're trying to do it like this, right? You're, if you're hunched over, if you're, if you're, you're, collapsed, you're going to have more difficulty. So to whatever degree you can, you want to open up. And you know, a lot of us have, uh, have injuries we've, we've been encountered over the years and things like that. So much more difficult for some than for others, but anything you can do to just kind of, oh, just open that up a little bit by lifting here, you can create more energy flow. So let's do, uh, let's just review the the three pillars, but add in that clavicular notch idea. And uh, just stand up and we'll, uh, I want to bring that into, into the mix. So feel the balls of your feet. Allow the weight to spread throughout the whole foot, but you want to feel the balls of your feet as the, the focal point. Feel that contact with the, with the floor through the ball. Simultaneously reach with the crown of your head and open the jade pillow gate. Tuck in the chin and lift from the clavicular knot. Feel that opening and feel the effect that has on your chest, your shoulders. Point your index fingers, feel the energetic coherence. Reach with your elbows, the arms are rounded. And then spiral down, turn, to get that sense of sung kwa. Now, Bring your arms out and just open up and feel the ease of movement as you reach out. And bring that back. Now just very slightly Pitch your torso forward a little bit so that your shoulders are, are rotated forward. You're closing that joint there, the humero uh, acromial joint. So there's, there's a little, as you do that, now just bring your arms up and just try to do the same thing and notice the restriction to your movement. Okay, and come back and then return to central equilibrium, lift from the clavicular notch and repeat. And just compare the ease of movement whenever you are, when you have the, the angle of the shoulders is level when it's not pitched forward and bring that down. So you just have that, that sense of it, that it changes your, your 
you know, your, the way you're holding your body. And it also opens the chest, it allows breathing to go easier, and it allows the gin to be expressed much more easily. Okay, so now we're going to incorporate this into an exercise that is a very common exercise in the Tai Chi world, but um, lots of variations on this one. And, I, and it depends on what you're emphasizing. Uh, uh, what you're emphasizing will determine, you know, how you do it. But I ask you to do this exercise, even if you've done something similar to it thousands of times, to approach this with a, uh, from a novel perspective, from a, from a perspective that you, uh, fresh eyes. Because this is a, really a, an important exercise and it's a, uh, it allows us to approach the shoulders from a substantial aspect and allows us to then incorporate the insubstantial as well. And by substantial, I'm talking about the actual physical, mechanical movements and which support the insubstantial or the expression of energy through the, through the shoulders. But you keep remembering to lift from that clavicular notch, lifting, reaching from the crown of the head. So you're not pushing. You are, there's a sense you're being pulled. You're reaching, actually reaching is a better term rather than being pulled. You're reaching with the, with the clavicular notch, you're reaching upward, you're reaching upward with the crown. So we're going to, the exercise, you'll, it'll look very familiar to a lot of you. And that is, that is this one. We're going to break it down into really its component parts, but the basic idea is this one. You're, you're, you're going like this, okay? Something that many of us have done a variation of this for decades, okay? And what I'd like you to do is forget all that and just bear with me and, and actually really feel into this because we're going to incorporate a number of the different aspects of what I uh, what I've been talking about here for you know these all these different classes and so first before you get the arms involved at all you want to get a sense of being able to get sun kwa so remember the hip thing you want to get your you want to relax your lower back and drop your way loo, drop your tailbone so that your, your pelvis is level and you can make that turn, okay? And just like the shoulders, if you, if you just arch your back a little bit so that the pelvis is tilting forward and then try turning, say, in your, into your right leg and notice how, it, how difficult it is to make that turn, how difficult it is to release the quad. Whereas if you drop your, your tailbone, you relax your lower back, and then you make that turn, it becomes quite effortless. So keeping that in mind as we're doing this. So we're going to feel the ball of the right foot and set the knee and then spiral down to the right. So you're sinking into that. And then you're gonna feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the right and then turn. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and then turn. Feel the ball of the left foot, spiral down to the right, turn. So this is very similar to the qua exercise we've been doing for months now. You just keep that going. So notice what I am not doing. And this is something that is radically different from the way this exercise is, is usually taught. And I'll show you what I mean. What usually 
uh, you'll encounter, often you'll encounter, if not usually, is the idea you're sinking down and then you're coming up and then sinking down and then coming up and you go doing this kind of thing, right? There's, and there's this parabola that gets, that gets created there where you're floating here. And so it'll look like, oh, like this, and you're coming up and then down and up. And we don't want to do that. Okay, that's a different exercise. This one is spiral down, do the ball, spiral to the right, and then turn. So notice I'm not launching myself upward because what that does is it uproots me. I want to spiral and turn, spiral and turn, spiral and turn. So, and there's always a sense of going down, but never a sense of pushing away from the earth. There's always a sense of going in and then, oh, you're, you're gonna turn. And there's a, a number of variations we can do with, the, with this motion, but I wanna keep it very simple right now. And that is spiral down, right? You're sinking in, you feel the ball, the left foot, and then turn, feel the ball, the right foot, and spiral down and turn, and spiral down and turn. So there's always this, a very fluid motion and it kind of looks like a, a, a uh, like a Mobius strip or something. It's like, you're, and there's never a point where you're, you're floating, never a point where you're not rooted with this. And this is the key to doing this. The other thing that we're doing here when I'm spiraling down, notice that my butt doesn't go past my, the side of my foot, right? I spiral down and turn, my butt doesn't go outside, outside of that. So I'm never going like that. I'm never rocking back and forth like this. I'm spiraling down, turning, boom. And you're getting this kind of, your body's doing like a figure eight, you know, with the, your hips are do, doing this figure eight kind of thing. So uh, that's that's the first part there. So then what we want to do now is we spiral down to the to the right and then feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and we're going to turn. And as we turn the right hand comes up being, you're reaching with the wrist. So you're reaching with the wrist. So it looks like, boom, you're reaching with the wrist. And this is very different than the way it's taught also a lot of times. A lot of, a lot of times you'll see that people reach from the shoulder. They'll come up like that and they're extending from the shoulder. And what this exercise is, is doing the way I'm teaching it now is to get away from that. To just as we don't want to bob up and down, we don't want to come up with the arm reaching from the shoulder. We want to get out of the habit of doing that so that when we're coming coming up, it's reaching. Notice how the the arm is very relaxed and it comes up like this. You're reaching with the wrist and then you feel the ball of the right foot spiral down to the left and then you, you're coming out, boom, going this way. So you're, you're going like this, boom. You're, the arm will come up, but it's not coming up from the shoulder. It's coming up from the wrist. Okay, so you get this very fluid kind of motion. And then when it comes down, Elbow first, wrist follows, right? Boom. So you're getting, so just get, just do it with the right arm for now. Just you're spiraling, you're spiraling down to the, and the left leg is spiraling down and then turning and the arm comes down, wrist reaches and then feel the ball to the right, spiral down to the left and then boom, you're coming like that, right? Doing the left hand, you're, you're um, boom, like this, you reach with the wrist, coming elbow, 
wrist. Elbow, wrist, boom, boom. So you're getting, you're getting this kind of action going on that it's the turn is what's driving that elbow out, the wrist out, boom. So, okay. So the, when we get into the, you, you're spiraling down to the left and the arms come down, your elbows come down, wrists come down, the right hand comes in front of the body, the left hand comes behind the body. So you get this kind of kind of thing. You're, you're bending from here and they're going spiraling down to the left, right hand comes up, left hand comes behind you. And then feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and then coming up, you're reaching with the wrist, both wrists opening. Notice that the elbows are lower than the wrists. Notice, notice how relaxed your arm is. And, but at the same time, if you were to test this and you were to, to have someone pushing on your arms, you would find that you have a tremendous amount of tensile strength there. The tensegrity of the structure animated by the energy creates a powerful gin. The other quality here is you don't want the arms in this point to go behind you. So notice that so when I, arms come up like this, notice that the hand is in front of the shoulder. What I don't want to do is this. I don't want to go behind me, right? I want to, oh, you know, my arms come up and you're boom. So you're spiral down, turn, boom. You're reaching with the wrists, floating, boom. Arms are very, very relaxed yet incredibly powerful at the same time. Why? Because you've got chin and you are, when you're, you're opening, opening the shoulders, opening the chest, making that connection all the way out. You're, you're an eagle. You know, you're very powerful. Mm. So you'll notice that I just changed that a little bit. I, you, can, you can do it this way where you're coming down into one leg, or you can do it with either leg. So when I said before, there's a variation, it, it, both are are necessary, both are valuable. So you can do it that way, or you can spiral down and load up the other leg. So what we're doing here is really feeling the shoulders, not as something to get rid of, not as something to relax, they are participants in this, but they are participants in a sense of way, wu way, doing based in non-doing. So the power that they give to this motion is in a sense of allowing the energy to, to flow. They create a they create a container for this um, expression of gin. Good. So okay. So relax 
And let's just take a seat. And I'd like to see if there are any questions on this one, because we covered a bunch of things there. I just want to clarify anything that any questions that people might have on this. Rick, you had something? I don't have a question, but my comment is I was doing it, I was having fun, but the moment I went back to the crown and to the the whole the thing and pulled up on both, the rush of energy was palpable. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. It's good to, good to hear. Anybody else? Stan, you have something? You're, you're on mute, Stan. You're on mute. There. OK. Uh, when we're doing it, basically, it's when we're warming up and all that, we're going to be doing this. Uh, is it better to just work both legs or work one, then the other one, and then eventually get to bo uh, both legs? I leave it up to you. Like I said, there's many variations you can do on that. You can stay on one leg, for instance, if, uh, if I want to. If I want to do this, I want to flip to, uh, yeah. okay, good. If I want to just stay on one leg, I can stay on my right leg and, and just do just do this, mm -hmm. right? And I go to my left leg. And just, it's entirely on, on that. So you get options. So you can improvise all that you want and explore, explore the uh, the various ways to do that. All the different combinations, mm. back and forth, you can do, you know, whatever. Okay, Richard. Very good, thank you. Um, very easy to quickly fall into old habits. Yes. Uh, once you start moving back and <laughs> forth, I found myself, you know, uh, not on my substantial leg all the time when I was rotating. So that's this is a great exercise to keep you uh, grounded on your substantial leg. Right. Um, but it's very, I found it, you know, I found that I'm going to need a lot of practice to keep from falling into <laughs> those bad habits of, you know, flying back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, um, it's often taught as something where you just kind of zone out and just become like part of this, you know, kind of a blissful kind of dance where you're just kind of going along and doing that. And I want, I would like you to <laughs> resist all impulses to do that as well. Cause I, I would like to bring the quality of mindfulness to every movement. And the more mindfulness you can bring into the minutia of this, but doing it from a super conscious state, if you enter into it from a quality of feeling, you'll go do it, you'll move into that super conscious state and you'll be able to attune to so much of what's going on that uh, uh, you'll be able to, you don't want to miss any of that. You don't want to miss any of that by just you know, floating out into the ether somewhere. So you want to get that. Dennis, you had something. Yeah, my takeaway was is keeping your back straight and your hips level. And I noticed my, my bad habit is I hunch over. And I noticed there's kind of a paradox there because when you hunch over, I feel heavy and I keeps me there. But when you're straight, you feel lighter. And I was noticing <laughs> just my arms are just floating up there. So it's, it's a habit I got to get out of is hunching over. Uh, for so many of us, it's... Uh... And, and I think the key word there is habit, because that's something where you know, we work very hard to establish these habits. And, uh, and now someone comes along and says, hey, you know, try it this other way. And, and you know, you say, hey, better than the devil I know. And uh, so it's, you know, to actually go and, and consciously do this, slow it way down so that you're really, oh, you're not just swinging your arms up. You know, another way that people teach it is to just you're kind of turning the body and launching your arms 
from the centrifugal force of the body is to launch the arms. And that's a fun exercise too, but it's not this one. That there is a conscious reaching with the, with the arm. So I'm gonna stand up again here. So, you know, and that is if, if I'm doing it, right? And let's say I'm, I'm, I'm turning and I can stop this at any point in the process, the, 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 right? You can break this down so that you can feel where you are and feel if you are indeed in central equilibrium, if your pelvis is level, if you're reaching with your clavicular knots, if your chest is open, etc. So that, you know, you get this, uh, you can get this slow motion kind of thing going there and really feel into it and say, oh, you know, where am I? You can check, you know, oh, if I'm like this or, you know, kind of crooked in some way, or if I'm reaching with my, uh, my shoulders, pushing up with my shoulders rather than reaching with my wrists. So these are all things that, that can be done. That's by slowing it down, rather than going into a trance on it, you, ah, you bring this mindfulness to every, every aspect of it. And it really brings you, locks you into the present moment. Cool, anybody else? Gallery, Valerie. Yes, I'm one that is guilty of not only doing it, but teaching it as the turn is a, it's the centrifugal force that sends the arms up. So it's not that at least I haven't been, you know, doing the whole shoulder thing. But uh, yes, this definitely brought a whole new perspective into it. Of, you know, I had to keep with each movement, you know, feel each wrist and then feel the elbows drawing it down and then the wrist rising up. So man, not the old habit, not the old habit at all. And what you're teaching, what I also taught for many years, you know, is not wrong. It's better what, than what they had before. So it's definitely a step in the right direction. But if this is a better mousetrap, then, you know, then you use it, you know. That because uh, it's uh, you know because because it works and it it also is in accord with the other other stuff that we're doing. It's another way of of training these many things and and to be able to get it so that you know your body just likes it that way and it doesn't go back into bad habits because it's because uh, that's familiar. It says no, no, we're going to do this other thing because it feels good because I don't like the pain in my shoulders. So I'm going to ah, be able to open that up and just allow that that to, to flow. And I like to breathe better. And I like you know, the sense of fluidity in my emotions rather than, uh, than the kind of halting, crunching, scrunching kind of movement. So yeah, Nick. Yeah, I, I, I know we're really focusing on the shoulders here, but uh, for me, in this exercise, one of the things that's really important is to first cultivate that feeling you mentioned of always going down. I find that when I get that with students, it changes the whole way everything else moves. Right. And, and they're more able to, to do it right. Yes. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's like song, 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 more song. And for a change of pace, more so, you know, it's like, <laughs> just keep it going. And, uh, and if you're pushing away from the earth, that's not, that's not so, that's, that's something else. And, you know, not to say it's wrong. There are people perfectly, you know, fabulous martial artists who do it that way. And, and God bless them. That's, that's what they're teaching. And that's, that's the way they want to go. But for what I want to bring to the table, Sung, 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 more sung is, is the way to go. And so thank you for that. That uh, I, I agree with you uh, entirely on that. 
Cool. Um, anybody else? So these are all, all great, great points here. Thank you so much. Um, cool. So let's, uh, so having that in mind, let's go and do some other stuff with the shoulders where we can bring more that mindfulness to our, to our, our, our shoulder uh, uh, activities. And we have many to choose from, but so I'll just pick one and we'll, uh, we'll start with that and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. So let's, uh, this is a real slow motion kind of, kind of deal, but uh, we've done this one before, but I like to approach it from this perspective too. The idea of, of opening the chest, you know, reaching with the clavicular notch, reaching with the crown, getting the angle of your shoulders correct. So you may find that doing the exercise now is a little different than it was in the past. So. This one, we're going to very simply go up like this very, very slowly. And we're going to meet the arms overhead. Okay, and reach up and then come down. So that's, that's, the, that's the exercise there, okay? Very simple. Um, one I've been doing for, gosh, now about 30 years, but it's a, uh, it's, I think, what it does, what we want to do by doing it super slow, you get to look inside. You use your, you know, the, uh, the Taoist expression is nature, which is, means that inward sensing, inward looking, um, that feeling of what's going on inside. So you're bringing your, the nature to the, uh, to, to the process. So, we begin and you want to start by getting your three pillars in. You want to feel the balls reach with the crown, open the jade pillow gate, reach with the clavicular notch, reach with the elbows, open the chest, open the shoulders, relax your lower back and allow your, your pelvis to level out. Find that sweet spot. Reach with the elbows. Arms opening up. And you'll notice that there's a point here. Before you get to 45 degrees, if we say this is 90, right? And this is 45. Before you get to 45 degrees with your arm, you'll reach a point where you're feeling resistance. So just be aware of that and don't push through that. Instead, you shift to the wrists and you're reaching now with the wrists. And notice that the shoulders are not going up. The elbows are, are staying, they're set and the wrists are taking over and feel that. Notice that the fingers are very relaxed. It becomes a different exercise if I have my fingers out like this. I want to have really pronounce my wrist and just feel into that and check your reach from the clavicular notch and, and get the angle of your shoulders correct. So you're reaching, really opening up your arms, just like in the other exercise, you want the arms to be you know, not behind you, not here, but you know, a little bit in front. Your elbows are coming right up in line with your torso. So you're, you're coming up, reaching with the wrist and feeling that, feeling the connections throughout your whole body because everything Every cell in your body is talking to each other, communicating at the speed of light and giving, you know, talking about 
what's going on? There's changes occurring here. And the arm just continue to reach up. Shoulders are very relaxed. Reach with the elbows. Open that shoulder joint. Arms coming up very slowly and just check in. See, how does that feel in your back, in your neck? What extraneous muscular tension are you activating to this very simple activity? Your arms coming up, reaching with the wrists. And you reach a point right about here where the, the wrists are straight up. You know, you feel that forearms are straight up. And now you activate the fingers. And continue to reach with the fingers now. Continue to feel the balls of your feet. Set the knees, sink a little bit as you reach up and find your hands over your head. Have them find each other, reunite. Sink and extend up even more. So as, the, as you drop down into the earth, you're opening, reaching, expanding upward, feeling your body lengthen. Now you're going to begin the process of separating. Reach with the elbows. are separated, elbows are guiding. You get down to here and the wrists take over. They reach out. Wrists are bent. Reaching to the elbows. Reaching with the wrists. Reaching with the fingers. Reaching down, opening up the joints in your arms and your shoulders and your fingers. Everything is reaching. Feel the rush of energy into your hands as you do this. Feel your elbows, fingers, reaching the clavicular notch, opening the chest, opening the shoulders. Feel the wholeness, the state of wholeness in your body mind. You move into that body mind spirit integration. Now, very slowly rotate your forearms and feel as you're turning, reach with your little fingers. They're, they're reaching and turning the forearms very slowly and feel the intense energy that's being produced in your forearms your hands and throughout your body mind by this simple action of rotating your forearms, reaching with the little fingers. Feel the chin. Cranking it up to 11 now. You just allow your body mind to, uh, to take in whatever part of that that it can use. Now we're going to start to rotate backward, back to, and you, this time you're reaching with the thumb. Reach with the thumb as you turn. 
You're still reaching also with the index finger, so it's kind of act as a uh, an axis to turn around. You're opening the joints. Feel the shoulders in all this and notice how they've been a participant in all this, yet they haven't had to work very hard. Way, way, way. They are providing structure. They're providing a substantial structure for the energy to flow through. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. And step in with the left foot. Take a deep breath, inhale. Here again, you're coming up, reaching with the wrists. Reach with the fingers. And exhale, reaching with the elbows. The wrists, the fingers, disappearing the chi. Pause for a moment and just feel into the emptiness. Okay, grab a seat, please. A few minutes left. Hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. Um, every time I think of the convicu convicular, the thing of the notch, I want to swallow for some reason. <laughs> is that is that normal or is that just me? <laughs> uh, not something that I do, but uh, I can see why it would be. They're kind of you know intimately connected there, your yeah. throat and your <laughs> your clavicular knots. So you they're think in the I, same neighborhood. <laughs> should I give into that or should I just let it relax? Or what, um, what do you think? Uh, I'd say just explore. It, it's doing you no harm. And uh, if um, also if you're developing a lot of saliva as a result of this, that's um, uh, called the dew from heaven. So that uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's liquid chi. So you want to swallow that. So so <laughs> definitely go 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 and swallow away. So <laughs> hey, not one to translate. So slobbering is good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to know, Keith. <laughs> um, anybody else? Stan, you got something? You, you get, you're muted, Stan. You got to get this mute thing worked out. Yes. <laughs> I have to first bring up that. I'll give you another year to figure that out. I think so. I think so. <laughs> uh, at, uh, with the Calvary Notch. Throughout this exercise, it's still you keep drawing, keep drawing it up for the entire thing. Reaching, or reaching, reaching for the clavicular knot, and, so and throughout the entire it, exercise, it's a complement to the. So your your crown is more to the posterior, and the clavicular notch is more to the anterior. Ah. So they kind of work together. You're lifting. You know, you don't, you don't want to just come up here and, 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 and hunch forward. You want to, mm, both of them coming up together. Ah, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Dennis. Yeah, I noticed as my hands went over my head, the arms got very heavy. And okay. It became apparent when it came back down, my joints were out because once my joints opened up again, then everything got light again. Good. So it's like you're fighting. Is there a way to keep them open, or is it just practice? Or 
It's practice. It's it's getting things in alignment. So we're just introducing these ideas here, and for you to figure out what the you know, like you said before, your habit your habitual posture is a hunch forward. So for that to change, it's probably not going to happen in the course of an hour. Yeah, yeah. It might, uh, it might take two hours for you to uh, <laughs> to become a master of that. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's it gives you a blueprint for doing it. And it's it's if nothing else, it's a better look. You know, this is a better look than than, than this, right? It just if it, if as Jonathan says, if do it for if for no other reason, do it for vanity, and uh, and uh, I <laughs> so it's you know this is this that's a family this, trait. Right? We do all this shit for vanity, one way or another. <laughs> Look yeah. at that dude's hair, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Anybody else, Valerie? Um. What I found is it gave me another opportunity to keep in touch with the uh, lower back, the way Lou, um, because there's, I found for myself, there was a tendency as I lifted from the clavicular notch that my, <laughs> my butt wanted to, you know, I wanted to get into that curve again. Um, uh -huh. So, uh, you know, it gave me, like I said, the opportunity to keep everything in check. Right. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. And that's, that's an important point because we just got to keep checking, you know, and it, it, that's why it, it takes, it takes a while to reprogram, you know, decades of doing it a certain way. So we got to, you know, but it's, it's a fun thing to keep us occupied in our, uh, in our, our golden years to uh, <laughs> just keep getting better. You know, <laughs> Keith, you had something? Uh, well, I'm not quite as golden as you, but I got to <laughs> tell you, this was probably the best thing that I've ever been introduced in the last year, dealing with my chronic pain and everything else. I'm still a baby. I feel like a baby bird when I'm like following through with you guys, but I'm like trying to do my best. Val sees me, you know, twice a month and like tries to like get me going in the right direction. But oh my gosh. You know, I have a, you know, I have so many bad wings and so much chronic pain that I know, Ricky Dog, you have done everything you can do to help me. And I would like to think that you didn't center today's thing on shoulders because of me. But I got to tell you, it really did me very well. You came as to long mind. As, you came with to the mind. hanging you, bar you as well. Mind. And I bought it. But it's something we all feel. Some we all benefit from the shoulder thing. Oh it's, my it's, gosh! It's it's it's, it's every it's yeah it's pretty um, pretty common. Well, shoulder. that in the middle of the night hanging bar, you know, I gotta tell you, dude. Hey, hey, I love you for another reason. I'm related to you, so <laughs> I'll go and I'll mute at this point. <laughs> okay, kids. Uh, it's been grand. Thank you all so much. Love you all. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Great to see you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> hey, when